wait, 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 stop scrolling. When is the last time somebody told you that you're amazing and you're doing an excellent job and you're really good at this thing called life? Uh, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I think our natural inclination so often is to be judgmental and critical of the people around us uh, that we work with, of our family, of our friends. Um, I think maybe sometimes we'll see something really cool about a person and we, we think about it in our brain, but when was the last time you verbalized it? You told someone that they're doing a great job. Or when was the last time someone told you that you're doing a great job? Uh, today I want to talk a little bit about something called encouragement and being an encouraging person. Uh, Hebrews, the book of Hebrews out of the Bible, chapter 10, verses 24 through 25 says this. Let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. It's possible if you've heard, if you've ever heard this verse before that you've heard it uh, in relation to being in church on Sunday mornings and being part of a gathering or a life group. Uh, and that's good and that's right and that's true. But what I wanna pull out of this verse is the part where it says, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds and encouraging one another. That scripture has always challenged me and I love that it challenges me. Uh, to spur one another on to love and good deeds and to be encouraging. Uh, and encouraging someone can be as simple as this. Let's say uh, you work in a fast food restaurant and you're uh, working the drive through and someone comes up, uh, you're watching your buddy who's, who, who's working the window and a really, really grumpy customer comes through and they're just hurling insults at your, at your guy friend or your lady friend who's working the window. And you notice that, that your friend just remains cool, calm, and collected, and gives that customer grace, doesn't answer in pride or, or whatever, uh, and you notice that they did a really good job. It's as simple, being encouraging is as simple as saying, hey man, you really handled that customer well. I saw how aggressive or confrontational they were, and you, you did a really good job at just keeping it together. Way to go, that was, that was good. Or maybe a mom. I recently just saw a mom who was uh, so good with her, with her kid, uh, there was something going on and she was a little bit nervous and uncomfortable and so I, I watched the mom just care for her daughter, ask her, hey, you know, are you okay? And it kind of explained what was going on. And I was watching that and I, I could have just watched it and said uh, to myself, well, she's a really good mom or that was a really good mom moment. But instead I verbalized it. It was through a text message. I did it later. But I said, hey, I noticed how you were with your daughter and that was so cool. Uh, that was such a good moment and it challenged me and encouraged me to, to be a better mom and to be loving like you're loving. So thank you for just being a great mom. And that was so encouraging. It's so easy to do. Uh, I say easy because it can, be, it can happen all the time, but we actually have to say it. Uh, <clears throat> so I have a scripture that can help you if you're critical. I tend to be critical and judgmental. I see what can be done better or how a person can be better more often than I see, hey, you're doing a really good job. But a way to combat that is this, Colossians chapter one, verses nine through 14, and it's a prayer. So I'm gonna pick a random person's name and I'm gonna put their name in this prayer and I'm gonna read the scripture to you. And this is how you can pray for your friends who follow Jesus. If you've got friends and they follow Jesus, uh, you can pray this prayer by inserting their name and then let the Lord speak to you. As you're doing this, he'll probably remind you of something they did that was really good. And then you can shoot them a text and say, hey, I was just praying for you and you do this really well. So here, here, here it is. <clears throat> it says, for this reason, since the day I heard about Melissa, I have not stopped praying for her. I continually ask God to fill Melissa with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives so that Melissa may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God and being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that she may have great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified her to share in the inheritance of his holy people and the kingdom of light. For he has rescued Melissa from the dominion of darkness and brought her into the kingdom of the son he loves. 
in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And what that does when I put a person there, it makes me so thankful for that person because it's scripture. Man, I'm so thankful for Melissa. She's a great friend. I love her outgoing, bubbly personality. And so you just send a text, hey man, I'm praying for you and I'm so thankful that I know you. And it's encouraging. That little bit is encouraging. And I have one more thing. Maybe you, you have people who don't know Jesus. And so that prayer doesn't really seem fitting. And here's another one for you. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. It says this. This is how you can pray over friends who don't follow Jesus or they don't believe in God. Uh, it says, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. And so what you do is maybe you have a coworker or a family member who they don't know Jesus or they don't believe in God. And you, maybe you have a, an understanding of why that is. They were hurt in the church or they don't believe God is faithful. And all of these are, are schemes of the enemy, if you will, that hinder them from, from seeing who God is. And so you say this, Father, I come against that thought uh, that they can't have faith in you or the shame that they carry or the condemnation that they feel. And I, I, I bring it against you. And it says there's divine power to demolish the strongholds and every argument that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And you say, Father, whatever thought that Melissa has in her heart that is against you, in the name of Jesus, I come against that. And I ask that you would open up her eyes. And then again, you become thankful for that person because you know God is at work. And it's so encouraging because you can just say to your friend, hey man, I, I really love you. And I think you're doing great at life. Uh, and I, maybe you don't believe in God or not, but, but he loves you too. Uh, and so there are so many ways we can be um, encouraging. And I wanted to say this, maybe you know someone who is, or you yourself are dealing with shame or frustration or disbelief in God's word or his promises or his faithfulness. And I just have to tell you that this is not of God. Um, and it's all the more reason to be an encourager uh, for people because God does not bring shame. He doesn't bring condemnation. He doesn't bring guilt. And if those are things that you are feeling, I want to encourage you today. You are loved. Uh, Jesus loves you. Jesus gave his life for you. Uh, you're worth it. And you're really doing an amazing job at life no matter where you are at on the spectrum. So be blessed, Facebook. Glad chatting with you today.